What is up, you beautiful people? Today, we're talking about swaps. What is a catamaran swap? What is an atomic swap? What is a submarine swap? What do they do? And maybe more importantly, how are they different? So that's the subject of this video today. If you're new here, my name is Jake Blockchain. I host the Built on Bitcoin podcast, but we cover everything going on in the Stacks ecosystem. And before we dive in, I want to thank the sponsor of this podcast, the Stacks Foundation. If you're a builder and you have something that you want to create that can benefit stackers, but lack the funding, or maybe you've built something on another chain, you like what Stacks is doing and you want to port it over, Stacks Grants Program is perfect for you. They have an array of resources to help you get started. And if it's the right fit, you can secure some funding for your project. So you can head over to stacks.org slash grants to get started. Check it out. All right, so let's jump in to what are these different kinds of swaps. I have notes to make sure I don't mess up. So I'll be looking back and forth, but a catamaran swap, an atomic swap, and a submarine swap. What, what are those things? So first, let's start with the absolute basics. What is a swap? A swap is simply an exchange of digital assets. This could be on the same chain or on multiple chains. They can happen to be in one transaction or multiple as long as the conditions of the swaps are satisfied. One of the biggest benefits to swaps is they don't have middlemen. The only intermediary is the code between the two parties involved. Typically, in a two-person trade, someone has to go first. So if I want to trade one Bitcoin for... 50,000 stacks, one of us has to go first and assume that you're going to do the right thing. Otherwise, you could use a third-party escrow service. This could be something like a bank or Coinbase or some other service or even a trusted friend where I could say, okay, cool, you send it to this guy and then I'll send it to this guy. And then he'll, once he gets both of them, he'll give them to both of us. But you're trusting the guy in the middle now where he can say, yep, I got the stacks or I'm still waiting on the Bitcoin, even though he might've received it, and then he can just walk off. And you can see on the, on the network that the transaction happened, but besides that, what could you do? So these kind of swaps allow us to uh, swap and trade with no trusted third party in the middle. So let's jump right in. Let's cover these three as fast as I can. I spent a ton of time trying to simplify this. And just to understand it for myself, it's pretty complex, but here's the basics to the best of my ability, starting with atomic swaps. So atomic swaps allow two or more parties to trade on-chain assets without the need for a trusted third party in the middle. So we know what swap means. Atomic in computing means it happens or it doesn't. It's binary, pass or fail. Either all the predefined conditions are met or nothing happens. And you can be sure that either you'll receive the swap amount you agreed upon, or you'll be refunded back the tokens that you put up. The power of this is that now you have a trusted programmable escrow service in the middle that has no risk of a third party stealing your funds. They can't be sanctioned. They can't lock access to your tokens, any of the myriad of ways that come from a middleman. So let's go a little deeper into uh, how atomic swaps work. So atomic swaps work through what's called hashed time-locked contracts or HTLCs. You can think of this as like a two-way safe where you put items on one side, like let's say one Bitcoin on Bitcoin main chain, and the other person puts up their items, let's say 50,000 stacks, and the contract in the middle confirms that everything is okay, and then both parties will swap, have their goods swapped. So let's go a little deeper into how this actually works. So thinking of this two-way safe and more specifically about this hash and this time lock contract, what, what are these components? So let's start with hash. Hashing is where you take some input, you put it through an algorithm, and then it sends you out a reliable output. So for example, let's say that you want to send a message that says, hello, Jake two words, nine letters, and there's a space in the middle. So you put that into a hashing algorithm and it outputs 734BB. 
reliably. Anybody who types in hello, Jake, in that way and puts it through that hashing algorithm will get that exact same number. Now, if you change one piece of that hello, Jake, maybe you capitalize the H or you put a period at the end and you put it into that hashing algorithm, the output changes completely. And every time someone uses that new, that new phrase with a period in it and puts the algorithm, they'll get that new output instead. So this is the basis of how cryptography works with much more complex parameters. You can factor in wallet addresses, you can factor in time and date, and you can see how if you have a long string of data or say that whole paragraph of something, every time one small thing changes, it gets infinitely complex. There's billions and billions of combinations. This hash is one of the key ways of how atomic swaps work. When you place your funds into a virtual safe for escrow, a hashing algorithm is used to create that secret phrase. The person on the other side can't unlock your funds without the input that created that secret phrase. When the other side places their assets into the virtual safe as well on their side, they put the same lock on their safe, even though they don't know the secret phrase. So it has the, the lock on it, but they don't have the key yet. The smart contract or service in the middle is watching all of this. Once it sees that both sides have put up their agreed upon tokens into escrow, it delivers a secret phrase for both parties and they unlock their assets. Now, when I was reading through that, trying to understand this, I had a question, why can't you take that output number, put it reverse through the hash algorithm to get back to the input number, which would be like something like getting to someone's seed phrase for the wallet. Why can't they take their wallet address reverse engineer it through the hash algorithm to get their seed phrase. And the gist is that they're just not designed that way. Hashing algorithms are one way. And so you put a number in, they go through and they output a number. But let's think through why that's the case as well. So imagine that simple addition is like a very simple hashing function. So you have something like one plus nine equals 10. So one plus nine are your inputs. The hash algorithm is the addition of those two numbers, and 10 is the hash output. Now, why is 10 not enough to know the input? Because there's tons of ways to get to 10. 1 plus 9, 8 plus 2, 20 divided by 2, all get to the same output. And so what's important about cryptography and this hashing function is that you need to know the input number put through the, the same algorithm to get the right output which in the future, as we'll talk about, that output is viewed as a secret key. It's a passphrase that gets used in all kinds of swaps. So the output is very important, but it's also important how you got to that number. So you need the input put through the algorithm to receive the proper secret phrase. So that's, that's a rough estimate of how hashing works. The other element of HCLCs, hash time lock contract, is a time component. So Atomic swaps have a time component, so you're, not, so you're not locking up your assets into escrow forever if the other party doesn't fulfill their side of the arrangement. In Freegear's version of atomic swaps, this is 100 blocks. So if you don't fulfill your side of the trade in roughly 16 hours, then the contract unlocks your tokens and you can reclaim them. So to recap, an atomic swap is a way for two or more parties to trade assets with no third-party risk just a smart contract in the middle. They put assets into a vault with a secret hash to unlock it and a time limit. So atomic swaps also have a time component. So you're not locking up your assets into escrow forever uh, if the other party doesn't fulfill their side. So in Friedger's version of atomic swaps, this is roughly 100 blocks. So you have about 16 hours for the other side of the party to fulfill their side or the contract will unlock your tokens and you can reclaim them. So to recap, an atomic swap is a way for two or more parties to trade assets with no third party risk, just a smart contract in the middle. They put assets into a vault with a secret hash to unlock it and a time limit. If everything is as agreed upon, the contract shares the secret codes to both parties and unlocks access to those tokens. So that's an atomic swap. What is a submarine swap? Submarine swaps are atomic swaps that let you trustlessly pay someone on chain to make a payment for you off chain. So to clarify, Lightning is not a blockchain. 
Lightning is a peer-to-peer network and it doesn't have a globally distributed ledger like blockchains popularly do. So Lightning is off-chain and Stacks, Bitcoin, Ethereum are on-chain. The reason you need something like this, a submarine swap, is that blockchains can talk to each other in a certain way that off-chain assets can't. And so because of that, you need a way to share that secret phrase in a way that doesn't introduce, once again, that third-party middleman that introduces trust and risk. The way that submarine swaps achieve this is attaching the secret key to a lightning invoice. A lightning invoice is that QR code that you'll scan when you're at a Bitcoin conference, or if you're buying an NFT on Gamma and you're using the lightning uh, payment option, that code you'll scan when you're using one of your uh, lightning wallets is a lightning invoice. And In a submarine swap, the secret key isn't revealed until the lightning invoice is paid. So let's look at an example of how this works to make it crystal clear. Let's imagine I want someone to send me BTC on lightning in exchange for stacks. So I want off-chain lightning Bitcoin, and I'll give them on-chain stacks in that place. So Trevor agrees to send me lightning Bitcoin. So first. I will lock up Stacks with a condition, an HTLC, that says that Stacks can, can't be unlocked unless they have this secret code. And then I will also provide a Lightning invoice to Trevor for the amount I want. And then when that invoice is paid by Trevor, it will reveal that secret code that he can unlock those Stacks tokens. So the beauty of HTLCs in this way is that if Trevor decides not to pay the invoice, and receive the secret code, after the time runs out, I get my stacks back. At the same time, because Trevor knows the stacks is locked with a condition and the secret code is contained in the invoice, when he pays the invoice, the secret code he needs will be revealed. Swap providers like LN Swap make a lot of this process automatic, so it's as easy and as safe as possible. It, It checks and balances all the different pieces that make sure that that contract is ready to go for both sides. So that's submarine swaps in a nutshell. Last but not least, what is a catamaran swap? So I'll caveat slightly here because catamaran swaps only exist on stacks and they integrate with the Bitcoin blockchain. So the the docs for catamaran swaps are fairly sparse on the specifics of how they work. You kind of go from the docs to GitHub. And so that jump is too advanced for me. So I did my best trying to understand how these things worked. I didn't have time to talk to Frieger and get specifics, but I'm pretty sure these are how they work. So asterisk, but let's jump into what is a catamaran swap. So a catamaran swap works similar to how a submarine swap does, except that all the parts of the transaction are on chain. So we call this above water. The off chain part of it is considered underwater and it's not strictly atomic. So The name catamaran here comes from catamaran boat, where two parts of the boat on the left and the right side are in the water with a connecting bridge above that sits above the water. And the left and the right sides of this catamaran swap represent different blockchains. The unique benefit to a catamaran swap is instead of revealing a secret key, you send a Bitcoin transaction that stacks this unique connection to Bitcoin allows Stacks to confirm it happened. So you can add a Bitcoin transaction as a condition, and then Stacks will confirm that it happened. So catamaran swaps have three main steps. First, a seller will lock up Stacks into escrow. And when they're doing that, they'll also give uh, conditions on how much Bitcoin they want to receive and the Bitcoin address they want to receive it to. Second, once that transaction is live, and and those Stacks are put into escrow, the buyer will send a Bitcoin transaction of the right amount to that address. And then once that happens, the third step, either the buyer or the seller will send a Stacks transaction with the Bitcoin transaction ID, and then the Stacks node and the the Stacks Bitcoin connection will look and Stacks will say, okay, cool, did this Bitcoin transaction happen? Yes, is it for this amount? Yes, then unlock these Stacks tokens. And that's how it works. All right, we did it. 
that's the basics of how these different swaps work. We covered submarine swaps, catamaran swaps, and atomic swaps. I did my best. I hope that was helpful. Let me know how I did in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Welcome to Built on Bitcoin. I know that things don't always go your way, but I'll be right.